Welcome to the penultimate episode of our Azamara Quest Australian Adventure. In this episode, Carol catches up with an old workmate in Adelaide. It's our second As Amazing Night, and we also explore Kangaroo Island and Eden. After enjoying a very sunny boxing day at sea, we arrived at our next port, Adelaide. Adelaide is the capital of South Australia, and as you can see, it's going to be hot, hot, hot. Right then, morning, morning. Good morning. Yes. Now, it might sound odd because we've got a, a room with a balcony that's out there, but we've got breakfast that's been delivered, which is lovely. Paul has got his. Do you want to lift your lid? I've got some poached eggs. Poached eggs. eggs. So we've got some toast, some grapefruit, some tea and some coffee. But the reason we're not... People say, well, why aren't you out on the balcony enjoying it? so bad. Well, we've just arrived, look, in Adelaide in Australia, and even can't touch that window it's just so hot it's already 32 degrees and it's 8 a.m so um we're expecting highs of 40 today um which is a temperature i don't think we've ever experienced in our lives but here we are we're in adelaide as you can see passengers are just starting to get uh, off went well, on maybe they've had enough already <laughs> But yes, so we're um, here, exciting day today because we're meeting up with uh, an old nursing colleague of mine, aren't we, Andy? So um, it should be a, an interesting day. And we've also got Azza's Amazing. What is it, sorry? As a Amazing Night at the Oval. What is that? As Amazing Night. As Amazing Night. <laughs> yeah. I knew she'd get it in. Ah, but we're going to enjoy our breakfast and we'll let you know how the day goes. To say Carol was a tad excited about being in Adelaide would be a massive understatement. Because today, for the first time in over 10 years, she'd be meeting one of her old nursing colleagues, Andy, from way back in her cardiology days. Andy met us at the port with his friend John, and after a drive around the centre of Adelaide, we headed to Handorf, an old German town on the outskirts of the city. Full of shops, art galleries, bars and restaurants, it was lovely. The only downside was the 40 degree heat. Thankfully Andy had packed his esky, or as we call it in Britain, a cool box, and it was full of lovely ice cold water. So here's a little look around the German village of Handorf. <laughs> After a nice wander around Handorf, we headed off for some lunch at the German Arms. Now everybody knows that Carol loves a big sausage, but today it was my turn. Look at this. As I'd gone for the big sausage, Carol chose the roast pork. And as you can see, her portion was massive too. We both agreed that the food here was absolutely delicious. After lunch, we headed to the ironically named Mount Lofty, the highest point in Adelaide with views out across the city. Carol and Andy talked incessantly about the state of the house service, past and present, and the good old days, as myself and John looked on obliviously. Andy had hoped to show us more of Adelaide, but with time going so fast, and with our second as amazing night awaiting us, it was time to head back to the ship for tonight's event. Seeing Carol and Andy together, it's hard to believe it's 10 years since they last met. Let's hope they don't leave it as long next time. Just to explain, Azamara do something unique, and it's called the As Amazing Evening. This is our second As Amazing Evening. The first was way back in episode 3 where we were in Bali. 
Tonight we're heading for the historic Adelaide Oval. We'll be spending a night with James Morrison, one of Australia's finest jazz musicians. To get nearly 700 passengers from a cruise ship to an event must be a logistical nightmare. But fair play to Azamara, they pulled it off seamlessly. On arrival, we were directed to the red carpet, where we were greeted with complimentary drinks and canapes. And as with all Azamara events, the captain is always there to greet you. The Adelaide Oval was first used for the Australian men's cricket team way back in 1884 and has been the home of the Adelaide Strikers Australian Rules football team since 2011. After admiring the fantastic Adelaide Oval, we had a few more drinks, some nibbles and then took our seats ready for the main event. Being completely honest, we're not big jazz fans, and we didn't particularly have high hopes for this night, but we have to say it was absolutely fantastic. And just when we thought our night was over, we were treated to this. After a fabulous evening with James Morrison, we headed back to the ship and enjoyed a nighttime sail away from Adelaide. Right then. Right then, cobbers. <laughs> That's what Paul gets keep cold and cold, getting cold, cold, cold. That's what some people have called me as well. Yes. What uh, my Sheila's trying to say. Paul is growing a beard because I don't know if you can see us moving on the bed. We got the tripod out. We're trying to do videos. We thought the the um, the weather around Australia would always be sunny and calm. Not so. This is what Carol told me, and I blame myself for being too lazy to look into it. I went out today in a t-shirt, and I nearly got hypothermia. Yeah. But let's tell you about Kangaroo Island. No, here's the thing. Are we going to leave the shot news to the end? Well. Guess what we see on Kangaroo Island? No kangaroos. <laughs> no, we didn't. Apparently, they're not. There's not. There are some there. Um, we're not having much luck about seeing any in the wild, are we? Oh. But they can tend to come out um, sort of dusk time. Of course, we're often sailing away before yeah. dusk comes. We're often sailing away on our roller coaster kind of yes. dusk time, aren't we? So. <laughs> so, so anyway, today we got off, and well, before thankfully, Paul did something he never does normally. He read the ticket. And I glanced at the tickets and said, right, okay, just the time, quarter to 11. We've got to be in the Cabaret Lounge, which is where all our other excursions have, have met. And then we got up and we're just having a bit of a leisurely mooch in the cabin, weren't we? Um, thought we'd go up to the Windows Cafe, have some breakfast. And Paul said, we've got to meet on the pier, mate. It's like, on the pier, so we've got to get the tender, and it was, we had about 45 minutes, and we thought, well, we just nip up, and... So anyway, after a bit of a rushed marmite and toast, and you had a couple of eggs in the Windows Cafe, uh, we hurried down to the tender. Um, oh, can you feel it? No. The, um, sorry if we keep getting put off. 
<laughs> you feel so, like you're in a so really slow like, tumble dryer. It's like we're zooming in and out on the Yeah, camera. zooming in and out. Anyway, what Carl's trying to say, we, yes. we tendered over to Kangaroo Island yes. where we didn't see any kangaroos. <laughs> but um, we did see other things. Lots of other people obviously also didn't read their tickets because when we got there we had to wait for ages because people were, still, yeah. were in the cabaret lounge. <laughs> oh, exactly. They were either there 14 hours too early for the show or they were late for the Fernando, excursion. Fernando, who's one of the um, excursion guys, he's lovely, isn't yeah, he? Is so we had a, light, uh, a laugh with him and said, oh, we were, we were going to go to the cabaret. He said, don't worry, there was loads that did. But anyway, back to Kangaroo Island. So for this... Um, Island. We were told you've got to book something because there's not a lot there in Penishaw where the tender stops, which is right. There's not, yeah, is there? No. There's a, a few shops, a few cafes. I bought a new hat, as we'll show you here, which is very exciting. Back to our um, what we booked. We booked the Penishaw and Swain's Rib Adventure. Now we've done some rib rides, haven't we, in Norway, and we'd loved them on the proper black get your legs over like you're on a horse rib boats but this was a very very civilized rib boat wasn't it it was well i don't want to cast aspersions but it wasn't a rib boat <laughs> <laughs> well it had the rib yes. around the edge so yeah. it could it um do a bit more of that couldn't yeah. it yeah so so basically their rib boat wasn't a rib boat <laughs> because a rib rib stands for a rigid inflatable boat um there was no inflatables um the boat was made out of aluminium so I'm sorry. But he did have that I'm rigid bit around this. Yeah, sorry as you like. <laughs> It wasn't. Uh, it, so our rib boat ride wasn't a rib boat ride. But from but start to finish, yeah, start from finish, we had a great time. There was a guy called Tony that welcomed us on the coach and at the had, jetty. He had a world class moustache. He it? did. Oh, it was awesome. He it did. It was just the most spectacular, all the way like that, all the way down. It was like something out of a, a seventies advert, wasn't it? it was. Like for high karate. But he something. was the bus driver as well as the, yeah. and he gave us lots of entertaining he facts. Did. He, he was, was very fun. funny. And then they took us to the little jetty um, and we got the the rib boat and we got taken out to find some wildlife we found some dolphins and we found some seals and we had a most amazing time we and we did a couple of donuts before we come back so let's just rather than rabbit on let's just show you a little bit of the coastline of after rabbit 10 minutes on. of rabbiting on <laughs> yes we didn't, we didn't see any rabbits either because there's none on the no, there's no right. rabbit no rabbits or foxes anyway watch this Yes, so here's lips. Shh, here's a little bit of Kangaroo Island. put us back on the bus and he said we've got plenty of time he said what i'll do is oh, yeah. i'll take you up to the top of the um, penshaw hill and you can look all over the the dock and you can take some pictures of your ship from the distance he said and if you want i can drop you back in the town rather than down at the dock and you can have a walk around town which obviously like we said yeah four shops Back to the ship, and we were pretty hungry, weren't we? we were. So we headed straight. Uh, Paul loves the patio, which is the best burger bar at sea, we think, don't we? I do. Very nice. Today they had an Aussie burger, didn't they? An Aussie burger with everything on it, and it did have everything on it. It had a fried egg, it had ham, it had beetroot, it had yeah. lettuce, it had tomatoes, and it was blooming lovely. I went for a healthy salad with a side of buffalo wings. With 40, so, 14 buffalo wings? Four. Oh, okay. 
but that was delicious too. So the reason we've got our, well, smartish clothes on, because <laughs> you don't have to dress smart on um, Azamara. Well, most people dress smart. I'm saying you don't have to dress formally on um, but Azamara. Do, but you do have to wear trousers to go into the main restaurant. Yes, and the specialty restaurant. And the specialty restaurant. Tonight we have Aquilina booked. Aquilina. Yeah, this is the specialty um, Italian restaurant, isn't yes. it? We've got a table booked for 6.30. Um, so we're going to go probably to the den to have a, a pre-dinner drink. Yes, if we got time. If I'd uh, waffle, waffle in Mary there, I'd just like... Waffle in Mary! But Aquiline's right at the front of the ship, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if we're feeling this movement in our cabin, well, we're sort of mid-forward on deck eight. This is on deck ten right at the front, isn't it? Is. So we'll see how much movement we get there or um, what food we have. But um, So let's go and show you what another... Aquilina is all about. Yes. As you can see, Aquilina is a very beautiful restaurant. And we were really pleased to see that Tatiana, who had previously looked after us in Prime C, was once again our waitress. If you want to find out all about Prime C, then check out our previous vlogs. The food and service at Aquilina was absolutely fantastic, but unfortunately, due to rough seas, we didn't enjoy the experience as much as we would have liked to. Right, right there. Then. So we managed to get uh, quite a bit of sleep, haven't we? It's been rocking and rolling, and I woke up in the middle of the night and Paulie was snoring away. He's got to have a shave at some time. He doesn't like shaving at sea because it was moving too much. So by the time we get to Eden, you might have a beard. Let me tell you about my night. I woke up and I thought, God, this is, must be the strangest dream I'm ever having. But it feels like I'm awake because I'm sure there's somebody next to me in the bed eating a big bag of crisps. That was me. <laughs> I woke up at four in the morning and I thought, you know, do I feel sick or do I feel hungry? I thought, you know, I feel hungry because um, we hadn't eaten. We ate uh, um, Aquilina actually, didn't we? But I just felt so hungry and we bought some crisps, our first bag of crisps since we arrived in Australia in on Kangaroo Island. And then I thought, oh, I'll open them. I did enjoy a, a handful or two um, and I went back off to sleep. So that's my new medicine crisps. Ah, but as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but we're still moving oh, a bit. Still. But it's better than it was, isn't it? It's, it's better than At it was. At least we can walk in a straight line now, which we couldn't do last no. night, could we? And we haven't been drinking before no. anyone says anything. So we're going to go off out um, and see how we cope. We're going to go for um, lunch probably today in Discoveries, which is lower down. It is at the back, but rather than go up to the right up to deck nine, because um, obviously the higher you go, the the more you sway, don't you really? Oh, yes, indeed. So um, anyway, we'll let you know how we get on. It's disappointing the sea days because we love sea days normally, don't we? And we're always out and about, joining in with the quizzes, going to the lectures, um, but it's quite difficult here, isn't it? The ship's just not equipped because it's an old small ship. It's just not equipped. I mean, the captain keeps giving us the old, oh, yeah, we're going to ride it like a swan. And I think, well, this swan must like have like a wing missing or something because <laughs> this is not, because it's not, the, it's not the, um, it's not the backwards and forwards. It's more the rolling. It's, it's the side to side. And sometimes it's just a constant vibration and then it, yeah. but it's all, but it's like this all the time. The front to back doesn't seem to be too bad, but um, mm. I've never experienced movement like it. Movement like well, it. consistently. Like said, yeah, consistently. You don't mind the one-off day, do you? We think, oh, but now we've been getting to the point where we think, oh, no, we're a day, another yeah. day at sea. Um, and we know it's not going to be stable. Yeah. Um, but anyway. I mean, obviously, this is lunchtime. Uh, we've got this till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning is when we dock. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, that don't has want been... to say I'm ungrateful, but not really looking forward to it. No, no, and that's the first time we've ever felt like yeah. that, isn't it? So just come back to the cabin. Yeah. There's still a bit of movement, but it is better than it was last night, wasn't it? Well, Even we I... spoke to the hotel manager, and he said, "Oh my god." Yes. He said he struggled last night. So if the staff are struggling too, then that um... was bad. But as you can see, things have calmed down. So I've even managed yes, to get rid shave. of to get, and you didn't even beard. notice, did you? I did. No, you didn't. Got rid of my billy goat gruff. Yes. So we... Our next port of call is Eden, but unfortunately, the weather doesn't look quite so good. Right then. <laughs> right then. <laughs> so we're laughing now, but um, today hasn't gone to plan at all. We've arrived in Eden. 
uh, the weather was supposed to be nice and first of all the rain came um, and then as we were well we got up this morning and um, thought oh we got a little bit of a time because our excursion is not till quarter past 11 so and I even said let me after the debacle of Carol she's been great with the you know where we need to be and what time but she didn't read the tickets on the last excursion and we had the meeting point wrong but luckily I read them so just you know forearmed is forewarned and all that sort of stuff I said well let me look at the tickets as well so I looked at the tickets 11.15 in the cabaret lounge so we had plenty of time we did a bit of work we had a coffee we had a lovely um it was all great. Yeah, the donut. mosaic cafe is lovely. Marvellous. And then we headed, headed to the cabaret now. It's actually 10 minutes early, which is great. Yeah. Know? Because nobody turns up on time and there's always somebody late. There's always somebody who got the right thing with them. And we got to the cabaret lounge and all the doors were shut. Oh, we that's a bit weird. So, so I opened the door and there was a man there just wheeling out a tea trolley. And he's like, oh mate, we come for the thing. Oh no, that left half an hour ago. We like, Half what? an hour, 10.45, he said, no mate, here's the tickets here, 11.15. Oh yeah, yeah, they changed that. So anyway, so we ran <laughs> down the gangway thinking, oh my God, has the time been changed? We haven't been told. Um, and I could see a guy right in the, down the bottom of the pier. So I ran while Paul was trying to speak to security to find out if anyone was left on for the excursions. Because um, we thought, oh, we've missed it. And we got out here and he said, oh yeah, you were sent a letter to your cabin a few days ago. And we're like, well, we haven't seen that. Um, why wasn't there an announcement over the tunnel? He was very really apologetic to be and, fair. And yeah, he was first, lovely. For the first time, unlike guest relations, yeah. the excursion guy was really sorry. He said, really, I'm so really sorry. sorry today. Yeah. And I said, well, look, I said, I don't want to tell anybody how to do their job, but when you've done a, a time change, surely just a little message over the tannoy on the morning of it saying just don't forget people yeah. if you're going to Marim, Mirambula National Park there's been a time change it's going half an hour early. or reissue the tickets yeah. with the right time with the right on. time on he said well yeah we don't normally do that he yeah. said yeah he said that's a good, good idea point. really so initially we were a little bit upset and angry we thought right we can't change it the coach is gone we were due to go we were hoping to see a blooming kangaroo today and a koala at the Marambula Sanctuary yeah um, I don't think we were meant to see any roos, are we any? But anyway, there was a shuttle bus and the people of Eden have been lovely. We got on the shuttle bus, but as you can see with my glasses getting wetter and wetter, it's just rain. It's not heavy, but it's consistent, isn't it? So we've been up to the town, had a little look around. Not loads there, Paul, is there some no. shops and we're not big into shopping. Beautiful Australia hotel that's just reopened. So we thought, you know what, let's just go back on the bus and come back. So I'm glad we've had a look around, but Eden wasn't what we, um, well, what our day was planned hasn't happened. And now we're getting to the point where what else can go wrong? And now we're getting a little bit giddy with giggles, aren't we? Because it's like, ah! Uh... Anyway, um, we're going to get back on the ship and have a look because um, we've still got onboard credit to spend and we're not sure what to spend it on. Um, so we'll let you know how we get on with that. And obviously after the debacle with this uh, excursion today, I'd like to think that's going to be refunded. So we'll have well, even more onboard credit. I know well, it sounds like a, you know, what a pickle we're in. We got all this money to spend on this. We, it's not like we can say actually we'll take the cash because you can't. So you well, physically... maybe we we'll just have to upgrade to the all inclusive. They've got three all inclusive on here. We booked just the with that comes with the cruise, just a standard all inclusive. You can get a premier and an ultimate. Visit our website because um, Paul's going to put together a um, a comprehensive drinks yes. package list of all prices of the drinks packages and the prices of all yeah. the drinks. We just might drink champagne for the rest well, of the Well, we might. Even though we don't like champagne, <laughs> we're just for spite. Ah, but anyway, it sounds like a real tough problem, yeah. doesn't it? But, um, but anyway, now we're laughing about it, so that's fine. We're going to get off the ship and uh, see what the rest of the wet day brings. Right then. Right then. So after our unsuccessful day in Eden, uh, we thought, ah, well, let's take advantage. We've got some 4G. Let's see if we can upload a video. As you can see from uh, the page on my computer here, no, we got to 2%. <laughs> so, I'll tell you um, something. Else. A lot of people say when they watch our videos that Paulie Morgan is like a bear with a sore head a lot of the time. Well, believe me, because we never get to see it on video, here's old bear with a sore head sat right I was next a bit to me, fuming about the excursion this morning. Gets back here, few minutes. Two percent. Two percent. I remember when. Um, remember when that bloke ate Ross's sandwich in Friends. <laughs> My sandwich. No, I wasn't that, that bad. Uh, no, she was worse than that. 
but you just see this sweetness and light here <laughs> grumpy old poor sweetness and light oh. but behind the scenes believe me anyway on a positive note um the excursion people have uh, true to their word and have already reimbursed us for our, our um excursion so can't complain about that and the guy was so lovely earlier wasn't he very you, apologetic let me show you i don't know if you can see this on our tv we must put our our laundry's back we must put it away honey so um on here i'm not sure because the light but here you can see um we've now got 435 dollars on board credit and five days suspended so we've got our our all in green is the credit um and obviously what we spent which was the other disco um land discovery we did which was actually a boat trip so i don't know why they call it a land discovery uh, but anyway and aquilina because we're in our grade of cabin is does not charged one per seven days isn't it specialty restaurants yeah. so that's really good so we're really we chuffed a bit to that yes. and you know what we're so excited because oh did i just sit on your knee <laughs> sorry I'm only seven stones. I, need I don't a know drink why. Now. <laughs> it's just shattered my uh, Nutella. Is that what it's called? Patella. I say, yeah. yeah <laughs> anyway, the captain's just come on the um, channel speaker system, and we arrive in Sydney tomorrow, which has been one of one of the reasons we booked this cruise, wasn't it? Yes. To be in Sydney for New Year's Eve, and he's just said that he's going to be doing a donut in front of the Opera House. Woo! That's exciting, isn't it? I'm, I'm so, not sure it's going to be as fast as the donut we did on our rib boat. No. But nonetheless, yes. I, I wasn't actually in the cabin when the announcement was made, but I heard it at the same time. Yeah. And two things I immediately knew. One, Carol was going to be very, very excited. Yes. And two, the captain said, you need to be on deck or out on your balcony for quarter past seven. Yeah. So the second thing was, I know that there's no chance of me getting a lie-in tomorrow. No, and would, why would you? Well, you could I put the alarm off at 6am so we can get a good spot. I could have watched it on a video, couldn't I? No. So that's exciting. And the other thing, because we had all the onboard credit, um, we've now, for the last uh, four nights, five nights of the cruise, we've upgraded to the Ultimate Drinks Package, which is really reasonable, um, which is $23.95 per person this is near per day. It's as near as $24 a yeah. day, which is 20 English pounds. Yes. Which I think is not bad at all. Mm. And all I'm going to drink now for the rest of the cruise is champagne. Mm. Even though I don't like champagne, I'm going to drink it just can have a Grosch. I can have. I still can have an Australian wine, but now I could potentially have a New Zealand wine if they've got it in stock. Called I'm, from Waru. I'm having a mudslide today. Yes, and I'm gonna have Baylor's. Yes. Woo! Like we've never had a drink on this cruise, on it. Yeah. And Join us in our final episode. Hooray! I hear you shout. Where we finally get to Sydney.